what you get with your cord replacement kit. You get the guide that tells you how to do the cord replacement, and you get a bag full of components that look like this when you receive it. So the first step in recording our Duet Honeycomb Shade is determining how many cord routes the shade has. And I can usually look at the cords coming out of the, the end of the uh, cord lock here. Maybe one of them's broken off and is up inside the shade. I, on shades with pockets and ferrules, I can look on the bottom of the shade. I have one, two pockets and ferrules on this particular shade here. Um, that's pretty easily done. On shades without the pockets and ferrules, there's going to be a washer down inside the bottom rail. I actually have to physically remove the bottom rail to access that cord route there. So I may not know how many cord routes there are until I open up the shade. Something I might carry for newer shades that need records is some pocket and ferrules. A couple colors of white will help you out with a lot of the products you use in the fields. You may not replace the pocket part, but you most likely, if the cord broke and the shade, uh, the cord fell out of the bottom of the shade there, you're going to need the uh, ferrule portion of the pocket and ferrule there. One of the first things you want to do if you're going to record a shade is, number one, you want to replace all the cords in the shade. If one's broken, chances are the other ones are pretty close to breaking down the line. If I have all my pocket and ferrules out in the shade, I'm going to go ahead and pull those off. I'm going to go ahead and just take it, grab onto it by the ferrule, and slide it off. The cord just wraps around it once here on the pocket and ferrule portion. So go ahead and pull that off, take that pocket and ferrule and set it aside. I'm going to reuse that guy down the road. Same thing on the other cord route. This shade has two cord routes. I could have a shade with up to five cord routes. This isn't unheard of. Take those pockets and ferrules and slide them out of the shade. The next thing I want to do is go over here and go ahead and pull the cord lock off. Pull the cord lock out of the head rail here. And I want to take a look at the cord lock. It has a cover that just snaps around the surface of the cord lock. This is a 3 8 duet, 3 8 inch pleat duet cord lock here. And I want to make sure there's no saw marks or anything up inside that cord lock. Um, if there are saw marks inside here where the cords just shoot into the cord lock, I need to replace this cord lock. Talk to your fabricator, uh, get a cord lock replacement kit, something like that. The next thing I'm going to do. After checking that, make sure he's okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on. It just snaps around the front and over the back, covers up that plastic cord lock. I'm going to go ahead and slide my headrail back and expose my cord guides here up in the headrail. I want to take a look at those too and see if they're all sawn up. Now I get replacement cord guides in my kit. So this is a 3 8 cord guide. This one here is a 3 quarter inch pleat cord guide, a little bit bigger. Um, if the cord guide sawed on one side here, just take it and turn it around and let it saw the other side. Okay, it's still good on the other side, so I've got 50% of my cord guide left. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull my cords all the rest of the way through. I've undone them out of the bottom rail with the pockets and ferrules. This shade doesn't have a broken cord at this point but I'm going to go ahead and treat it as though it did. I'm going to completely remove the headrail. And on larger shades, when I remove the headrail, I may want to take a rubber band and wrap it around the fabric here to hold that fabric in the stack position on each end of the shading. So I may want to wrap that with a rubber band there. Next thing I'm going to do is just pull the cords out. These are my dead cords. I'm pulling them all out of the shading here. Then I'm going to pull those dead cords through my cord lock here. These are my dead cords, my cord lock. My equalize or my uh, cord guides are still good. My cord lock is still good. I'm now going to go ahead and take apart the stop ball. And here you're looking at my Hunter Douglas stop ball here. And uh, what I have to do to remove this stop ball is go ahead and hold on to the stop ball itself and pull onto the cord. That removes what we call the coffin out of the stop ball, and it's got some extra cord in there uh, for leveling in the shade. This is my old cord here, so I'm just going to simply remove it. And then I'm going to pull my equalizer out of that stop ball housing there. There you can see my equalizer. And the way that equalizer comes apart is I take a pair of needle nose pliers. The wide end of the equalizer here is the bottom. I go ahead and take my needle nose pliers, just gently squeeze out that wedge there. So that wedge falls out. And all that wedge does, this large feature here, rams up against the cord and holds that cord in place. I'm going to go ahead, if that's still good, there's no cracks on it anywhere, I'm going to go ahead and reuse that equalizer. There's also a replacement equalizer in the kit we received from Hunter Douglas.
So now we're going to go ahead and take the lacing tool that comes in our record kit and it comes to you just kind of as a bent loop of wire here. Something I want to do to make it more applicable to our use here is take a pair of needle nose pliers and just bend that wire a little bit flat so it's a little pointier to fit through the shading there, fit through the fabric. Um, it won't fit through just as it comes from Hunter Douglas. So now I'm ready to begin restringing my window shade. And the way I'm going to do that is this simple piece of wire here is just going to go into the bottom feature here of my pocket and ferrule, into my pocket if you will, and just poke in. There's a hole that goes all the way down through the shading here, and that's where my cord's going to go. At this point, I'm going to consider the length of my shade, and I'm going to poke that through. I'm going to consider the length of my shade and I'm going to take the spool of cord that comes with my record kit. There's a lot of cord on this spool. I'm going to go ahead and take that cord, pop it through my lacing tool here, and pull it through the bottom of my shade. So now we're going to attach the pocket and ferrule onto the cord. And you simply push the cord through the pocket and ferrule, make a loop, and push it through again. So it makes a cord loop around the pocket and ferrule. A key thing to remember about this pocket and the ferrule is it has a little notch in it and that's right where I want that cord to go is into that notch. Then I can go ahead and slide some extra cord down out, of, out the bottom of that pocket and ferrule. I want to give myself six inches, eight inches of extra cord. There's a lot of extra cord on this spool so I want to give myself extra cord to work with when I'm reassembling the shade. At this point I can take the cord itself pull up on the top of the cord and pull that cord into the bottom of the pocket here. And that cord there is secured. It's not going to pull through on me in any way. How do you know how long to cut the cords? There's a formula on page 9 of the record guide and it's two times the height plus the width. And the reason for that is is the sh one cord routes very close to the uh, cord lock one cord route's very far from the cord lock, so you need to take that into consideration. Cutting the cord length is very important. So on a shade that's 50 inches wide by 45 inches in height, I would take the 45 times 2, which equals 90, plus the 50 inches and cut my cords all at 140 inches. So now I've corded both cord routes on this two cord route shading. I've cut my cords with extra ample length for them to fit into the shading. And I want to basically get down to where I have the two ends of cord here. I'm now going to restring my cord lock. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and pull the cover off. It just snaps around the end of the cord lock there. And basically, I want my cord to go down through this front section here, underneath this guy, over the top of this guy, and down through what we call the locking dog here, this little mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and run my cords down through this top feature here open up my locking dog and run it through like that. So it's running through the cord lock that way. Then I come over and flip it over to the other side here and make sure the cords go underneath this feature here that guides the cord to the proper channel of the shading. This is what I want, to, want it to look like from the top when I'm done recording that cord lock. This is what I want it to look like going through the cord lock feature here, so it locks off. Then I'm going to go ahead and reattach my cover, and I want to put this front feature here underneath the front of the cord lock, and then wrap the back feature around it. It does kind of snap onto the cord lock and snap into place. There's more space to the rear of the shading here than there is to the front. It gives it a nice radius look here to the front of the shade, covers up that ugly locking dog there. At this point, I'm going to pull all the excess cord through my cord lock. Get it all through there. Make sure it's going through the right path on the cord lock. And line it up so it lays down at the end of the shade. Both the cords are coming down and coming out the end of the shading here. I want to let the cord lock kind of hold them there for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and reattach my head rail. The new Duet headrail has a beautiful new front surface to it. You may find some of them with the front and the rear the same on some of the older shades. But in this situation, this is the front of the shade, and it's going to go to the color side of the shading here. The color side of the shade here 
is the front of the shading. Now there's a slat up here in the top of this fabric, a little piece of aluminum slat that's going to slide into this feature of the headrail here. And I want to slide this on as I'm pushing it onto the fabric. I don't want this feature or this feature of the headrail to rip up my fabric. So I want to get just one cell at the top there with that slat and gently get it started into my headrail. Just slide it on, take my fingers and guide the cord guide into the headrail. Make sure the cord isn't wrapped around it like this or, you know, creating a snarl up in here. So put that cord guide into the shade and then just slide it over, keeping that cord in the center of the shading as I slide it. Sliding it over, get up to the next cord route, take both the cords, make sure they're going down the center of that cord guide there, and slide the head rail over the cord guide. Now my head rail is completely inserted onto the fabric. I'm going to go ahead and attach my cord lock here and it just fits into the two features inside the head rail there. Make sure the cord's not pinched in it anywhere and it slides on to the end of the shading. So we've recorded our shade. We've shut, cut our shade cord lengths to the proper length. We've left ourselves a little bit of extra cord to work with up in the window opening. We're now going to reassemble our stop ball. And basically what I'm going to start with is taking the cord and running it through the stop ball cover itself here at this point in the shading. Go ahead and run that cord through. Then I'm going to take my equalizer. Again, I've left myself a little extra cord for adjustment. But I'm going to take my equalizer and take the cord and wrap it around the equalizer. Go ahead and hold it tight. Take the wedge and drive it up from the bottom. Remember, the wide end, the larger end of the equalizer is the bottom of the equalizer. Slide that wedge into place and just gently squeeze it with my needle nose pliers. Give it a gentle squeeze. That's now holding my cord for me there. It's not going to slip up in the window. Now I'm going to put that equalizer into the equalizer coffin here, into this little housing here in my stop ball. And it just fits in there. Now my cord cover comes down here from the top and it's going to slide over that guy. But first I want to take the excess cord and wind it around the base of my equalizer coffin housing here. And it just fits around the base. It can hold quite a bit of cord. Four or five inches is probably all I'll ever need in the bottom there. I could use that to level up the shade down the road if it doesn't have the pockets and ferrules in the bottom rail there. Um, and the idea behind that is that all fits inside there without any of it hanging out the bottom. I've now assembled my stop ball here and I'm ready to go ahead and level my shade up in the window opening.